And that, last but not the least in our session is Estelle Mas from uh, NGO Access Now, and uh, she is Europe Legislative Manager and Global Data Protection Lead there. And um, her topic will be around data governance and data protection by design and default. So, Estella, the year is yours. Hi, thank you very much for having me. Um, I have first to apologize because it seems like my um, slides are not working. Um, a bit too much of previous settings actually um, preventing from my, my computer sharing. So we'll go ahead without the slides um, if that's okay. Um, Oh, thank you so much, actually. <laughs> Someone pulled them out. Great. And um, so I'm here today to discuss with you um, data governance and specifically data governance through data protection by design and by default. And in order to do that, I want to discuss how these changes can leverage um, data protection as an asset for organization. And I'll be discussing three specific points. First, how data protection must be seen and understood as more than a compliance question and how it must be embedded in practices and product. This is needed to achieve the goal of data governance through data protection by design and by default and to deliver data protection to people in consumer in practice. And this may involve rethinking some of the business model that we see nowadays that considers data as a commodity and where sometimes people forget the persons behind the data. And finally, uh, we will discuss how everyone has a role to play in this governance shift uh, from legal to engineering team. And I'll share uh, some tips with you all on how we think uh, we can get there. Before I dive into, um, into the topic, I wanted to briefly introduce uh, myself and the organization I worked with um, and why we spend so much time thinking about data protection and data governance. So my name is Estelle Massé. I'm a global data protection lead at the NGO Access Now, which is an international organization that works to defend and extend the digital rights of users at risk around the world. We operate a 24-7 digital security helpline to help provide direct assistance to journalists, activists, and users on the ground that need to secure their communication. We work from a policy perspective, a tech perspective, a legal perspective on how to protect people's information, people's data, and people's rights online. And we want to make sure that people's data do not fall in the wrong hand and provide security training to organization to do so. And I myself sit on the policy team, which advise lawmakers on how to advance meaningful data protection and data, data governance measures. And as you can see, for us, data protection is more than a, than a compliance issue, um, which is um, what I wanted to, to be the, fir the first point of this conversation and the first anchor, is that nowadays, a lot of the talks around data protection are legal talks, which makes a lot of sense, you know. A lot, um, data protection officer and legal team have been thinking of those concepts for many years, and this is really important that it's happened. But in order to see a real shift in how data protection is considered in organization, we need a move beyond compliance and through data protection by design and by default, which requires a much deeper thinking about privacy, about data protection throughout organization beyond the legal team. So it's not to say that the legal teams and the compliance team should be out, but it's just to say that their other colleagues should, um, should join the conversation. Data protection by design and by default mean that companies would take a positive approach to protecting data by embedding practices in both their technology and the organizational practices. It means that data protection would become an inherent part of the company, of a culture of a company, and it would not be considered as a compliance checks only. And a lot of companies are already doing this, but those governance shift altogether requires much more, um, much more changes altogether in, in the current business model we see um, in the online environment. This shift of governance structure would require thinking about privacy and data protection from the beginning of a process of developing a product or a service. And this can be in very easy steps, like considering when you design a product, do I really need to collect this data? Is there a way to have the same functionality with less or no data? And this approach that can start with those simple questions and then grow exponentially with time can help us organization save money in the development of product and services. 
if we are in a situation where data protection is seen as only a mere compliance tool and comes almost at the end um, of the preparation of a product just as a check before market placement, you may have had to go and do adjustment back and forth between legal and engineering and product development team and marketing in order to make sure that legal requirements are met. But if you see data protection as part of an inherent design and, and default feature that your organization is thinking about from the conception phase, then when it reaches the point of the compliance check, it should be much more easier because the, the question that the compliance team will be asking, in fact, have been asked in a several different manner throughout the development of the product before. Um, can I get to the next slide, please? Thank you. And this means fundamentally changing the way data and personal data in particular is being seen in the current um, online economy. Data is not a commodity. It's information about people, about users, about customer, no matter how you call, you call us. And it's something that needs to be protected more than harvested. Personal data is not a commodity because your name, your address, your family photos are not commodities. And they are part of you. And even though it's true that personal data is part of today's economy, and this is how the current business, business model is being built, it doesn't mean that they must not be protected and that people should not be in control of it. And by embedding data protection by design and value for in product design and building, you would make sure that people's rights are being protected, that data is being used, but data is being used sustainably. And yes, this involves rethinking the business model. But with GDPR and the General Data Protection Regulation enforcement catching up in data protection by design and by default being a legal requirement under this framework, the sooner organization can start making those changes, the more sustainable their business would be. Next slide, please. Because we need to think back of why we are doing all this. Obviously, there are legal requirements that are behind it, but Again, thinking of privacy by design and by default would be thinking of what can be the advantage for you and your organization to do that and thinking back of the reasoning of why do I need to spend so much time protecting this information. The first point that we discuss is not forgetting the users behind the data and whose information it belongs to. And fundamentally also reminding ourselves that data protection and privacy are two fundamental rights enshrined in the EU Charter. Um, in, on our continent. And those rights represent the basis of our democratic society and principle that anyone willing to um, take part in this society must respect and protect. And this include the economic activities. So you may think that you know, some requirement may be burdensome or some, some of it may, may, may create additional, um, additional steps for you to, to create product, but anything less than respecting those rights would neglect the foundation of the society we decide to live in by protecting those rights, which they are not so far-fetched. And we can see very quickly how when regime change are happening, when threats are happening, when violation of, of rights are happening, if data falls in the wrong hand, people's lives are very quickly at risk. And so obviously we want to be thinking of protecting data for those extreme scenario that are no longer so extreme, extreme sadly, but also for day-to-day's -day activity. Those are fundamental rights that needs to be protected and thinking of how to actively protect it should not be seen as a burden. It's an obligation that is here, but it can also become an asset because it's about, again, putting the people at the center of your product. Uh, next slide, please. Because data protection is not just a legal requirement, should not be just com about compliance, but it can lead to innovation. And we need to open up to the concept that the two are compatible and the two should be compatible. Privacy and innovation are not mutually exclusive and they can be on the contrary, mutually reinforcing. When we stop looking at privacy from a narrow perspective and we start embedding it in the culture of, of our organization. For now, a lot of the tech industry and the digital economy relies heavily on the use of personal data for, um, for economic benefit. To the point that um, the value of data is often described as the new oil, the new currency, the new trade exchange um, for this online economy. Um, data fuels the advanced online ecosystem and some company would have us believe that the internet has always been based on targeting ads, as if us as user, if we refuse to share our information, 
we are the one responsible for the fact that services cannot be free and we should therefore forego the possibility of accessing services if we're not willing to enter into this trade-off. But we need to be asking ourselves, is it really what innovation is? A blackmail between customers in order, and companies in order to obtain our personal data? Can we not think of a more sustainable way to innovate in a way that innovation actually reinforce our rights? Because once again, it's not just the right thing to do, it's also a legal obligation to do that, but this is also something that can bring you benefit if you are truly thinking of the user you're serving with your product. And so we need to think of a different approach, one where data is used responsibly, where online business models don't rely only on tracking and where different financing models are possible. And when a few large actors don't dictate the rules for everyone, smaller businesses, customers, and government alike. We need to challenge the assumption that the current dominant business model for the online industry is the only business model possible. Um, a model that is neglecting to consider the privacy and data rights of users is not sustainable. It relies on the fact that many people are not fully aware of what is happening with their data and that some cases works only because data protection are not being properly enforced. All of this needs to change. People need to, people will be getting a better understanding of what's going on, and this law, including the GDPR, will finally be brought to enforcement, which means companies violating people's fundamental rights will have to change their practice. But you can get ahead of all of this in adopting privacy by design and by default. And it's never too late to adopt data protection and privacy as a competitive advantage. So how do we get there? Um, can I get the next slide, please? Coming back to the point I was raising initially is that data protection by design and by default needs to involve everyone in your organization, no matter how big or small. I list here a list of department that should be involved, but if it's even if a two, if it's a two-person company, this can apply. You know, just the two people creating a product needs to have the thinking and not just rely on external legal compliance or external check on how do I protect data and what how do I consider the impact that my that my service or product will have on people. And some of the core data principles are the one that should be reflected through all of these departments. Uh, next slide. So obviously, data minimization is one of the key protecting principles that is also a legal requirement, but needs to be extracted throughout all of the departments to have those questions of how much data do I really need? Can I make the product function with less? Um, can I can I tweak a little bit my product to be collecting less data so I have to predict less information and I create less risk for the users? Um, and finally, next slide. Thank you. Um, here is a list of additional questions that um, everyone can be thinking about when we talk about um, implementing data protection by design and by default programmatically within an organization is considering from the data we saw the need to, to collect how to limit its access to only people who need that, how to also prevent unlawful or third-party access that is not necessary, how to ensure robust security around it and that the data will be protected. What are the different tools you're going to be using for that? Perhaps it involves encryption as a model, perhaps it involves other um, security structure around the storage of your data. Do you need to be tracking users? A lot of the time, the answer may be no. And I would challenge that a lot of the practice industry at the moment are happening just because it always happened this way. But we need to challenge those assumptions. So this is always one part of the big question is like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Is it because it's always been the case? And finally, try to think of privacy and data protection as a differentiator on your market in order to advance your product. Thank you very much. Thank you, Estelle. Uh, we had Estelle Massé uh, from Access Now. I have one question before you leave us uh, uh, for the break. Do you agree with the statement that uh, data protection by design is more and more not a luxury, but a long-term or sustainable tool for survival of any business because consumers at the end of the day and employees will turn their backs to the business which is not doing this? Absolutely. I do think that the organization that get ahead of the of the group and are the first one to implement those changes might get uh, an advantage because this is truly uh, more and more what um, what user and customer we are asking. Um, the previous 
presenter from um, NordVPN was also saying, you know, they're getting more and more clients because people are wanting privacy and ask for privacy. And sometimes, you know, as user, we don't use the word privacy. We might just say like, I want a service, a service that is less creepy, that is tracking me less. But ultimately, this is what it is. We want services that respect our rights, that respect data protection. And we understand that certain data may be needed for services to function. But the current economic reality just show that too much data is being used and that create risk for abuse, and then it's not properly protected. So the sooner organization can make a change to be more sustainable and more responsible with the way they use our information, the greater market share of users they can gain and the greater trust they can gain. Okay, thank you. Thank you once again for being with us, Estelle.